It can be argued that fall is the most important season when planting a butterfly or pollinator garden. The shortening days and cooler temps are signaling to all of nature's creatures that winter is soon approaching. Migratory butterfly species, and there are 14 besides the well-known monarch, need food as they travel to their wintering grounds. In addition, other pollinators, such as honeybees, use fall blooms to stock up on nectar and pollen for the coming winter. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm going to tell you about some native plants that will keep those fall migrating butterflies moving and also help other pollinators get ready for the coming winter. First up, a group of early blooming fall plants, the ironweeds, the Vernonia species, which bloom from about mid-August through September. There are around 25 species of ironweed native to North America. They are perennial clump forming plants that send up several unbranched stems that can be from two to 10 feet tall, depending on the species. The small purple flowers are produced in profusion at the ends of the stems and are extremely attractive to butterflies and skippers and many species of native bees. Ironweed is also a host plant for at least three species of moth. Since ironweed tends to spread slowly, even though it's a large plant, it can still be used as a great eye-catching accent in a smaller pollinator garden. Next up, we have the thoroughworts, also known as bone sets, the Eupatorium species, which bloom from August through October, depending on the species, of which there are 24 in North America. Thoroughworts are perennial, single stem plants that grow two to six feet in height, depending on the species. Any branching is usually at the top of the stem and helps create the flat top clusters of white to sometimes pinkish flowers the thoroughworts are known for. The white flowers attract a wide array of pollinators and a patch of thoroughwort can usually be heard buzzing before it can be seen. Speaking of pollinators, if you're finding the information in this video useful, please be sure to pollinate that like button. While butterflies, skippers, and native bees do come to thoroughwort, the biggest attraction seems to be for wasp and flower flies. If you are an avid wasp watcher, I know there are a few of you out there. If so, please comment below. A patch of thoroughwort is a must-have. Thoroughwort is also a host plant for several species of moth. The one drawback of the thoroughworts is they can be a little aggressive, some species more so than others, and are best for somewhat wilder areas of the garden. They do great in old field settings. And now for what many consider the fall blooming plant the fall blooming asters, the Symphiotrichum species. In case you're wondering, these plants used to be in the genus Aster, so they all technically were asters, but they got reclassified into the genus Symphiotrichum, but everybody still calls them fall asters because fall Symphiotrichum is just too much of a mouthful. There is a ton of diversity in this group and a ton of species, between 75 and 90 in North America which vary in flower color, size, and blue time and length. Most of the fall asters will start to bloom in September and can continue until the first frost and even beyond it if the frost is light enough. Flower color can be purple like the New England and aromatic asters, blue with the blue asters, and white with the calico and field asters. The flowers attract small to medium sized butterflies and skippers, as well as many species of native bees. The fall asters are host plants for many moth species and the silvery checker spot butterfly. A butterfly garden would not be complete without some fall asters. If you would like to learn about what is probably the most important group of fall flowering plants, check out this video. Subscribe to Backyard Ecology so you don't miss out on more native plant info and get out and explore nature in your backyard.